Hey there everybody, welcome back to uh, the next unit for Physics 11. So in this unit we're going to be taking a look at forces. And um, you probably already know a little bit about forces already. Um, you could probably name some forces off the top of your head. Um, forces come in sort of two varieties, contact and non-contact forces. So literally if you pick up a rock and throw it, you're exerting a force on it. Or if you push your car because it ran out of gas, then you're pushing it, you're exerting a force. Um, that would be contact forces. If you think about things like gravity, if you drop a rock, it falls. Nothing seems to be affecting it except it falls downwards. Or if you think about magnets, if you try and push two magnets together with their light like, poles, then they're going to repel each other without having to come into contact with one another. So in general, we're going to say a force is really just any push or pull. So anytime uh, there's any sort of push or pull, um, that's going to be a force. And the units of force are Newtons, uh, named after Sir Isaac Newton, who uh, famously um, described gravity in, order, in addition to coming up with his laws of motion. So um, it turns out that if you want to build a universe, there's actually only four forces you need in the entire universe to make it function. And um, we'll talk about these. So the first one you know well is gravity. So gravity is the is one force you need to have a universe. The next one, which is maybe uh, you're somewhat familiar with, would be the electromagnetic force. Um, the third and fourth ones are ones you may not have heard before, but they are the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. Now, um, we're not going to get too far into these things, but it is important to sort of understand that at a fundamental level, um, our universe, these are the only things that push or pull each other. Gravity, we understand. If you fall out of a tree, you fall downwards. But electromagnetic force is actually responsible for a whole bunch of the forces you experience in your daily life. If you have, uh, if you take a baseball and you want to push that baseball, you throw that baseball forwards, um, that's actually being pushed by this electromagnetic interaction. The baseball is made of atoms with electrons around the outside. Your hand is made of atoms with electrons around the outside. And when you push your hand into the baseball, the baseball moves away because of the repulsion of those um, electrons. The strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, as their name implies, happen at a really small, small scale. So they happen down at the atomic and the subatomic um, scale. And they're the reason why atoms uh, stay together uh, in the case of the strong nuclear force and why sometimes atoms will actually fall apart in radioactive decay in the case of the weak nuclear force. So we're going to focus largely on the force of gravity in this, in this, um, in this course. And so the force of gravity, um, we're going to learn, um, just a, we're going to get an intro to it today and then we're going to learn more uh, in depth about it um, in the next unit. So the force of gravity is really the attraction between matter. And um, what you need to recognize about gravity is a little bit strange because um, the other forces, uh, like with say electromagnetic force, you can have a magnet that's going to attract um, and you flip it around then it's going to repel. You could take two protons and try to push them together and they'll repel, but if you take a proton and electron you bring them together then they're going to attract. So uh, electromagnetic force can work both ways, but gravity is always, always, always an attraction. Uh, gravity is always trying to pull things together. And interestingly enough, gravity attracts everything in the universe. So everything with mass and energy in the universe is, is being pulled together by this big, uh, far-reaching force. And so it's important for us to understand the difference between these two terms coming up, which is mass and weight. We often think of those as being the same thing. What's your mass? What's your weight? Must be the same. It's not quite. So the mass is really just the total amount of matter in an object. So by that I mean if uh, I wanted to know your mass, I could count up all of the individual particles that make you up, all the protons, electrons, and neutrons, and I could add them all up and it would come to this total. And you would notice that the, um, the mass is measured in kilograms, so that's a measure of how much stuff is in an object. When we can contrast that with weight, 
weight is measured in newtons so weight is a force and weight is really the gravitational force between two objects so if you think of that um, since you have probably spent most of your life on planet earth you haven't realized this thing which is that you've been walking around and you know you have mass and you know you have a weight but it turns out that those are not necessarily both constant while you are made of a certain amount of stuff your mass is being attracted to the mass of the earth and it's pulling you down that's why you don't float away but if i took you from the earth and stuck you on the moon or stuck you on jupiter or just put you out into um, deep deep space somewhere far from anything uh, something would change and what wouldn't change is your mass you are still made of the same amount of stuff what would change is your weight because your weight is how attracted you are to the largest object near you which in our case is the earth or the moon or what have you so mass is constant throughout the universe. I mean, I guess if you eat a sandwich, your mass can change. But, um, but what I mean is, it, no matter where you are in the universe, your mass would be the same value. Weight changes depending on where you are. And so we have a formula here to calculate the force of gravity. So here's our first force formula. Fg, which is just force of gravity, is going to equal m times g. And so m, we can imagine, well, this is force of gravity. m is mass and we're going to always measure that in physics in kilograms compared to say chemistry where you might measure something in grams and then <clears throat> so your mass times g now g is something that often gets misunderstood but g is the acceleration due to gravity and you actually know what this value is on Earth, you know that this value is basically right around 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. And so um, often when students see this G value, they say, what is G? Oh, G is gravity. Well, it's not just gravity. It's the acceleration due to gravity. Because G is the acceleration, FG is the force. And those are not the same thing. In the last chapter, we explored the fact that everything seems to fall at the same rate on Earth. If you drop an elephant and you drop a mouse, for whatever weird reason, they will both fall at the same rate. And that is true. But what's not true is how easy it is to lift that elephant up or to lift that mouse up. It's much more difficult to lift the elephant because it has so much more mass. So the weight of the elephant and the mouse are different. Their accelerations would be the same. Okay, so G is going to, it's not going to be the same everywhere, right? G is going to, is going to vary depending on uh, where you are in relation to the object that's, that's creating what we call a gravitational field. So how close you are to the earth, but it would also change depending on the size of the planet. So G is going to vary depending on the size of the planet and how close you are to it. So uh, for example, on Earth's surface, the acceleration due to gravity at sea level is right around 9.8 meters per second squared. If I was to take you and stick you on the top of Mount Everest, you might find that actually G is just ever so slightly smaller. Probably not much, um, so much that you'd notice, but if you had a really sensitive piece of equipment, you might notice a slight difference. On the moon, on the surface of the moon, the G value would be right around 1.6 meters per second squared. Now, um, that's because the moon is much, much smaller. It has less mass, and so it's not gonna attract you to it quite as much. If I stuck you on the moon, you would be much lighter, which is why when you see uh, video of astronauts walking around the moon, they look like they're kind of jumping around and floating through the air. 
On Jupiter, the g value is probably somewhere right around 24.5 meters per second squared. Now it's a gas giant, so where the surface of Jupiter is kind of a tricky question. But um, if you were to get close to Jupiter, you would notice that g would be like two and a half times stronger than it is on Earth. And on the Sun, it would be immensely strong. Like on the surface of the sun, it would be right around 274 meters per second squared. So not that you probably could, but if you could stand on the surface of the sun in that brief instant before you burnt up, you would probably notice that you felt 28 times heavier just standing there. So let's find uh, our weight on the Earth, the Moon, and Jupiter in Newtons. So um, let's say my mass is right around uh, 100 kilograms. Okay, we'll just use my mass for this. So the weight on Earth, my weight on Earth would just be 100 kilograms times 9.8, which is right around 980 Newtons. You know how um, sometimes students think that, oh, okay, if mass is measured in kilograms, then maybe I can measure weight in pounds, because that's what we often do. We often talk about weight in pounds, but no, weight has to be measured in newtons in physics, okay? So the weight on the moon, Fg on the moon, instead of it being 100 times 9.8, it would be 100 times 1.6, and so I would weigh 160 newtons. That's like right around six times smaller. So I would feel six times lighter as I'm walking around on the surface of the moon. And then on Jupiter, Fg would equal 100 times 24.5 would be 2,450 Newtons. So on the surface of Jupiter, I would feel two and a half times heavier as I walk around. It's like I've got an extra trask and a half weighing me down everywhere that I go. Okay, so that's it for our first lesson on forces and gravity.